Shall we? Should we sit you want down? me to sit there? Okay. Okay. okay, I'll go no, there. That's it. Oh, I see here. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Mark, for what I think has been an outstanding <laughs> and thought provoking presentation. Um, I think we have all enjoyed it. There's been a massive number of questions on Twitter and texts, etc. Many things are happening just outside of this room. Did everybody take their ties off? <laughs> Not yet, huh? Okay. See? Even Twitter See? takes time. Cheers to you. So, um, so there's been, as I say, a huge, huge interest on behalf of everyone, and I think that on behalf of everyone, I, I have to thank you for, for, I think, it's been a very inspirational presentation. There have been many questions, so I feel we don't have much time. There's coffee afterwards, so I'll just share a few minutes of, of a little conversation. Many questions around, as I say, so we've tried to group them. Um, many come from parents, and which relate also to teachers. Um, I will summarize them this way. We are the generation, the in-between generation, so as to say. We have children who are natives, mm -hmm. who are digital natives, while we are immigrants, as you call us. Mm -hmm. And we are the first generation that this happens to, as parents and educators, mm -hmm. as I say. Uh, so, can you give us some, uh, a piece of advice to get rid of what you call our accent, our immigrant accent, when we approach them? Well, the first thing to do is to admit that we have it. Mm -hmm. and to say, let's laugh. And I know that when I get invited to some place I've never been, and I, have, I sit there at my... I was invited to Middle Fart, Denmark. And I never heard of Middle Fart. It sounds pretty funny in English. <laughs> but the... Uh, so I'm sitting in front of my computer, and I have Google Maps and Google Earth and all this. What does my hand do? Atlas! It reaches for the Atlas, because that's my accent. And as soon as we can say, okay, we're different, mm -hmm. we do the same things perhaps, but in different ways, then we'll be good. And then the next step is to listen. Mm -hmm. Because the kids last night were complaining, and they were saying, you know, I can do my homework with music. Mm -hmm. And for this generation, the music is totally different, it's ubiquitous, it calms kids down to a large extent. Mm -hmm. And so parents may think, how could you possibly do that? And the answer is, listen to them. If they can do it, then let them do that and be, be willing to have the courage. And that's why I talked so much about courage. Be willing to have the courage to change. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do agree. There are huge surprises when, when we listen to our kids. Yesterday, we had this workshop with parents and students. And some of the comments from, from parents yesterday uh, when, we, when we finished was that, uh, that they were surprised by what their kids had to tell them. So the funny thing is that probably they never listened. So I think we all learned a lot because of that. Um, then there's um, this other question. We've talked a lot about teachers, and of course it's, it's, the, it's critical. It, it's the critical part of the whole system for change. Uh, we're talking about motivation of, of students. How do we motivate teachers? Because they have this very important role to play. Very well, difficult. The first thing I think about teachers is that they are, for the most part, people of very good will, they want to do the right thing. They want to help their students learn. And they're people of skill. They are people who've been trained who can do this. What what's missing is a different answer, a different approach of things that they can do while still doing what they think they have to do, which is cover the curriculum, and without a huge amount of time. So, for example, to me, f for a teacher to ask his or her students, what, is your, what are your passions? What are you passionate about? That might take 15 minutes in a class. That 15 minutes will be so powerful and will change their teaching. So w I think we have to get teachers to say, I want to do this. I want to change. And the only way we can do that is to say, look at some of the results. Look at how happy the kids are. And by the way, look at the scores, which are getting better because the kids are more engaged and involved. Definitely. Uh, you have uh, one of your other books. This, uh, you've talked about the latest one on partnering, which I think is excellent. Uh, uh, the other book, very well-known book, Don't Bother Me, Mom, I'm learning about the use of, of video games and edu in education. Um, it's very provocative. Tell us a bit, because there's been questions on this, about the use of games. We've, we've, 
we feel there's uh, universes apart. One's education, the other one's entertainment. So how can we put them together uh, to serve better our students? Well, games are just one tool that teachers can use. Um, and that parents can use to help their kids, to help educate their kids. And they're a very important tool because kids are so attracted to them. But what's very important is to understand the games and to look be beneath the surface and to see what the games provide for students. So they may provide a deep understanding of how systems work or how rules work. Not every game is created equal. They're not all good, mm -hmm. but many of them, many of them are. And again, this is talking with your kid. Mm -hmm. I remember a parent saying, shut that game down, shut that game down. It's just about fighting. And the kids came up and they said, no, it's about strategy. Mm -hmm. It's about strategy. And they knew that what they were doing was not just bang, 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 but they were figuring out how to do it right. So we got to watch them. We have to listen to them, and that's the, that's the key thing. You have to be able to say to a kid, why do you play this game? What do you get out of it? Is it more than just bang, 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 or fighting? And they'll tell you. Mm -hmm. So you see there's a huge potential in the use of games in the, the in The, the learning people context. who are in business will tell you that game players make better decision makers. The people in the military will tell you that people who do game simulations make better military people. Mm -hmm. The people who run businesses will tell you they make better entrepreneurs. So there are many, many things that our kids are learning that we just don't think of as learning or as important mm -hmm. because we think that learning the curriculum is important. We don't have many games about algebra. We may, hopefully, someday. Mm -hmm. But that's not the point. The point is that they learn a lot of important things that maybe aren't specifically in the curriculum. And if you had to choose just to, to end, just the, the one thing we're doing wrong, which one would that be? I as parents and as educators. Yeah, uh, and again, uh, this is, we've heard this and I've said this over and over again. The thing that we're doing wrong is we're not listening. Okay. Is that we're doing things top down, is that we think we know the answers. And when I go around the world and talk to educators, especially I talk to ministers or ministries and well, I see rooms of white hair, white hair or no hair. And I think these people think, how do these people think that they can make education for today's kids without the kids being there to have part of that conversation? So the very first thing that I would say to do, and you heard last night mm -hmm. that the parents, and this was a wonderful thing, the parents last night said, we don't need more external speakers. We need to have more conversations with our kids. Mm -hmm. Once you do that and you really truly listen and the kids know that you're listening and that there's mutual respect, then it's amazing the things that come out and the progress that you can make. Well, thank you very much. We hope to be engaging in our debates at Global Education Forum. The Young, that's one of our main ideas for the time to come. And, uh, of course, we hope to, be, uh, to have you on board for the rest of our learning journey. Thank you very much. Professor. Thank you so much. <laughs>